kind of hard to tell, but that rear injector, it's literally the She is ready to get fired up, man. It doesn't make this any less annoying. I told you guys last time it was going to drive under its own power. It is time to put this tune on. It is time to start that car. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. because I obviously know that it will turn over. I know that it's probably most likely going to start, but it's just a matter of how it's going to run after and all of the uh, aftermath stuff that I'm really concerned about. You know what I mean? 70% sure that my battery might be dead, so if that's the case, I won't be able to do it right this second anyways, but I'll be back with you in a minute. Let's see. As you guys saw, everything is completely together. She is ready to get fired up, minus the fact that there's no coolant. Um, but now we're just going to check to see if I have, uh, see if I have any power, so... Fingers crossed, right? All right, those are both tight. Moment of truth. Let's see. All right, I'm super dead. All right, this is a couple days later now. Sorry, I forgot to update you guys. Top bolt for the alternator wasn't uh, connected and also my positive terminal was super loose. So I fixed those two things and ta-da, we have power now. I uh, went and tried to go crank the car over it is leaking from both injectors on this side from the top, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those O-rings real quick and then try to give it another startup. Can I just say, I love having the aftermarket fuel rails because I can see everything and you know I can get my hands in there. However, it doesn't make this any less annoying. So it was leaking from this top O-ring on the cylinder four injector. Cylinder two was perfectly fine. It wasn't leaking from there, it was pretty dry, so I don't wanna mess with that. Uh, so I'm just gonna change this one and then throw it back in and see what happens. Got it all hooked back up. I'm hoping that everything should be all good now. Got it nice and tight. I double checked before I tightened everything down to make sure that everything was seated properly. Fingers crossed. Let's go check that. You leaking? I can't really see. Yeah, it is. Kind of hard to tell, but that rear injector, it's literally leaking right from the top O-ring that I just changed, so I'm not sure if, I, if I'm just putting that in wrong, but I'm going to take it out one more time and replace it again. Alright, so I just turned it on real quick just to make sure that it wasn't leaking, and it is pretty dry down there. I ended up just having to double gasket it, which I mean, I would advise against normally, but it worked for me, so that's what I'm doing. I'm super lost. I have no idea why it's not starting. It sounds like it wants to. It sounds like it's got like a dirty carb or not dirty carb, dirty throttle body. I cleaned it though, so I know it's not that. Uh, I'm gonna go ask for a little bit of guidance and be right back. Okay, so I'm back with help. A lot of help. Corey's over there and Pedro's down in here already doing what he does. I think we're just trying to go ahead and fix my entire fuel system because I might have gunked everything up. Alright, so real quick update for you guys. Sorry, I know I kind of left you in the dust. We rerouted the AOS, so now this is up here, sitting a lot prettier. Got rid of that nasty fuel filter. I don't know where I, I don't know where I put it. Oh, oh, no, it's gone. Got rid of that fuel filter that was sitting over there, so we have a little bit more room over here. Now we're just going to try and uh, give her a startup. See what happens. Good. 
sounds like it. Sounds like he wants to. We're changing out the tune, going back to the OTS from Cobb to see if we can get the car to start and see if it's a tune issue or if it's a mechanical issue. Honestly, if any of you guys have ever seen how to, uh, like, you know, do an e-tune or anything like that on a Subaru, it's really easy. It's just, uh, you gotta be flexible. That's all. <laughs> There's a couple of test connectors down here, and then uh, they send you a white or blue connector depending on what year you have. And honestly, you just follow the prompts on the access port. It guides you really well. Yeah, like this one right now is asking him to connect the green test connectors, and that's what he's trying to do right now. Yeah, I just need to be fucking nocturnal because I can't see in the dark. Oh. We are putting on the uh, stage two OTF soon because it's kind of the closest one I have right now. We're going to see if it's a mechanical issue or if it's an ECU problem. Fingers crossed that it's... Just in case you probably might just be like a revision or something. All right, I am on. I'm on a stage two OTS tune right now. I'm gonna prime it a couple times just to make sure there's pressure in there, and we're gonna see if maybe this makes a difference. I'm gonna prime it one more time. All right. Give her a start. Closer. Give it a little bit of gas. Nope. Okay. So it could be that your coil packs are plugged in backwards. We can check that. It's, it sounds like it. Yeah, give it one more time. He just unplugged the mass airflow. Oh. See if it'll start on the close. Yep. I'm gonna check the coil pack orientation because I might have uh, flipped them. Let me fill you guys in. As we were going through all that madness, this is the next day by the way, we had noticed that I had a code for crank position sensor. So naturally we all went to go check it out and while we were taking a look at it, trying to just pry it up, it was seized in there, it was stuck, you know. Didn't really come out that easy and uh, this and a bunch of copper wire is all that's left. That's why the timing covers are off and the alternator's out and I just wanted to make sure that my timing was good since I had it all off. The really funny thing about that though is it didn't have to come out in the first place. So if you look at the wiring on the actual plug itself, it's orange on the right and then yellow on the left or for you guys it'll be orange on the bottom, yellow on the top. I had those reversed. The plug for my crank position sensor and also my knock sensor were gone on this harness because of how I ripped it off last time. So I had to go ahead and put those back together. So we flipped them back and Cameron came over, got the rest of the bucket out, which is that little thing right there, and got a new sensor from that short block that we're going to be building soon. And then we did try to fire it up yesterday and I'm going to wait to show you guys the results because I... I don't know if it was just like a fluke thing, but it, she was alive. It started and I, I didn't hear any bad noises, like I was so excited, but it was super late at night so I didn't get to record it, so I'm going to put it back together now and I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to actually start it for you guys today. We've switched back to the uh, 650 tune, so like I'm on my actual proper base map now. Alright, I got everything all put back together, we're going to try to give it a quick little start. Camera came back to say hi, so now he's going to help hold the camera and be a camera man. Camera on, man. Try it again. Put a gasket on the blow off valve in addition to the o ring that's on there. So let's see. Nope. Yeah, but that was way better. Somewhere. Yeah. I found the vacuum leak. Hang on, let's see if I can show you. Vacuum leak right there. No, so that, that'll do it. A wild Pedro has entered the chat. Oh, oh, and 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 his squad. What's up? What's up, BYOers or builders? I don't know what you're gonna call them yet. BYO builders, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Top mount actually wasn't the problem. That part where it was ripped wasn't going through, so there was no hole on the inside. So we're gonna try to start it and see 
where that wine is coming from, so bear with me, guys. Pause. It sounds like his timing belt is rubbing on something. Alright, so we're gonna try to limp it over to Pedro's house and further diagnose. Right. Just because he has more tools than me and his face. So we're gonna hopefully limp it over there. The camera's grabbing it because that's what we're supposed to be talking about car. Again, if it blows up, it's not gonna knock Dude, my car is rolling! Ha! Huh. I was gonna be like, yo, my car is rolling! <laughs> That's crazy! That's fucking crazy! Say hi to Dom! <laughs> That's absolutely crazy! It he said it drove with no problems. Other than other than other than like yeah. But like it got here, dude. That's crazy, I'm cool again. Now it's my turn to be in Pedro's garage. <laughs> that helps we just siphon out as much of the old stuff as we could and uh, if this works and that is you know one of the doubts that we had mitigated and uh, fingers crossed we can just keep troubleshooting from here. Reason number 17 why I want an iPhone. Oh, oh whoops sorry guys I didn't realize it was recording. Um, I got that on video. <laughs> Jake admitted it he wants an iPhone. I'm deleting that. Uh, so right now we just we got new gas. This is new 93 from not eight months ago. Yep. And we're gonna. And we got two gallons of it. And we're trying to get better. Basically, just get the car to idle a little bit better. Yeah, Maybe the ethanol content is throwing off the tune because the tune's expecting 93 octane and it's running on eight month old 93, which is probably realistically 85. <laughs> uh, yeah. Whatever. Whatever it really is after sitting for so long and. The reason why I even said it was because your fuel lines have been disconnected, so moisture has been getting in the lines and all that stuff. So and sitting through the winter, definitely like one million percent. Yep, your lighting right now is just. Yeah. I'm trying to get your face in here, but there it is. <laughs> Got your face. But oh, and we still have the wine. The wine hasn't gone away. Yeah, no matter what we've done, it hasn't gone away yet. So it goes. Wee! And it's only on diesel. So we're gonna yeah, have to figure that out. He actually held it there with the launch control like 35, completely gone. So yep. he let off of it, it was it came back. Yeah, so we'll figure out what's going on with that. We just went to the gas station, got two gallons of fresh fuel, and we're about to try to start it again and see if we can get the idle to settle. If we can get the idle to settle, we can get the idle to settle. Damn, she is not happy. <laughs> Basically what we're doing is we're taking a fuel canister back to the gas station that let us borrow one. But basically, one thing that I started to notice as we were trying to run Jacob's car and get it to idle properly is that his AFR is reading like 24, which means 24 to 1 roughly, somewhere around that line. And if you notice mine now, I'll try to pull this off so that they can be moving. 
you can see it. Hold on, let me turn. Ah, so many <laughs> things going on. If you notice, the idle stays anywhere between 14 and a half to maybe 15. That's what it's supposed to stay at, at idle. And his is staying at 24, which means he is running very, very, very lean. Meaning I'm not getting enough fuel. You're not getting enough fuel delivered to the engine. And that's a problem because everybody, you guys probably know this. If a car is running lean, you're more likely to have pre-detonation inside of the cylinders. And that's not good. So, as you get on it, it should be going down. And that was just a casual pull. I'm not accelerating fast. That's what you should be able to see. And as we are revving his car up to 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, it's going up in the range, which means that we're demanding more fuel, but the car's not delivering more fuel. But we're still adding more air, and that's why he's running lean. And unfortunately, I'm gonna deem it an issue with the tune. Uh, that's, the only, that's the only thing. We've already set his fuel pressure, especially now that the car is running. We were able to get the fuel pressure right. It's just not, it's not getting the right pressure. Yep. We've checked FDR. We've literally drained the old gas out of there and put new gas in. Everything's tight. We've double checked for O-rings, gaskets, all of that. So the fact that it's not idling and that it's, it's, it's running extremely lean like that, 1 million percent has to be tune related so we're gonna go talk with him and see what's going on i'm not sure what the last thing i recorded was but it runs and drives like you heard him just say under his own power we took it around the block obviously drove it from my house to here it moves but we're still having that issue where it's like leaning out so i am gonna limp it back home and i'm trying to just i'm gonna take apart the top end again and just make sure that everything down there is good replace gaskets again i have a massive air leak somewhere and we need to figure out where it is but I told you guys last time it was going to drive under its own power, and it did. It made it here. So, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. It's been fucking nine months in the making, but I appreciate you guys. And I will see you in the next video, which will be us probably taking apart the top end. Peace out, y'all. I'll see you in the next video. That is what Pulse is supposed to feel like. God, it's been so long. Literally.